Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving another geometry puzzle, which is awesome. At this point, if you want, you can go ahead and pause the video and try the problem yourself first. Okay, we have two semicircles with radii 3 and 4 and a square with side length x. They're all inscribed in a 6 by 14 rectangle as shown and we're supposed to find x which has the side length for the square. All right, so we're going to be uh, making some connections here. Uh, first of all, let's go ahead and label this is 6. We know that this is 4 and this is a 3, right? We don't know the square side length, so let's call that x. All right, and then let's go ahead and make some connections. So I'm going to go ahead and first uh, extend this side length here. So I'm going to bring that down. And I'm going to go ahead and bring the other ones down as well. Okay. And then I will be connecting the center of each semicircle to the vertex of the square. Like this. And like that. All right. Let's get started now. Okay, so these are perpendicular lines or line segments. Now we know that the whole thing is x. Uh, so if you subtract it from 6, you're going to get 6 minus x here. For this one and for this one, it's going to be 6 minus x. And then uh, we have some other lengths that we need to designate. So let's call this length A and let's call this B. Obviously, if this is A, if this is A, uh, the other one is B, then their sum is going to be X, basically, right? So we could actually go ahead and uh, call this something else in terms of X, but let's go ahead and leave it at that for, for right now. Okay, now we're going to use the uh, Pythagorean theorem. So let's go ahead and write down our equation. So if this is A, the radius is 4. So this is 4 minus A. Okay. Uh, this is 3, so this will be this piece will be 3 minus b. Since this is the radius, it's also going to be a 3, and this is going to be a 4 here. So, we're basically going to be getting uh, two equations from here. Let's go ahead and write them down. By using these two right triangles, we're able to write two equations. Let's go ahead and write them down. We also know uh, for a fact that uh, a plus b is equal to x, because it's the side length for the square. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and uh, write our first equation. Our first equation is going to look like this. 4 minus a squared. I can actually go ahead and change that. Let's go ahead and change the color here. I'm going to proceed with that. So 4 minus a squared plus 6 minus x squared is going to equal 16. That gives us an equation, right? And the second one is 3 minus b squared plus 6 minus x squared. Again, the same term pops up because that's the height of the triangle. They both have the same height, and that's going to equal 9. Okay, cool. Now, one of the things we can definitely do here is um, we can just go ahead and subtract uh, these from each other and then get rid of the... Uh, the x and then we're gonna get something so we're actually basically trying to associate a and b here and then uh, We can just go ahead and use the fact that a plus b is equal to x Okay, awesome uh, Well at some point we're actually gonna substitute uh, a plus b for x or vice versa But let's go ahead and leave it at that right now. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and subtract these two equations Let's go ahead and subtract. That's going to give me 4 minus a squared minus 3 minus b squared. And that's going to equal 7 because I'm subtracting this way. And let's go ahead and expand this now. Um, well, we, we do have an option of expanding or we can actually go ahead and isolate this too. So let me go ahead and keep the 4 minus a on the left hand side and go ahead and add this to both sides like this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to square root both sides at this point. And we know that 4 minus a is positive because a is less than 4. So when I take the square roots, obviously the right hand side is definitely positive. So the absolute value of this is going to be 4 minus a. And then the other side is going to be the square root. And the square root of what? Uh, that's going to be 9 minus 6b plus b squared 
plus 7. We're going to go ahead and simplify that. And that's going to look like b squared minus 6b plus 16. Okay, so this basically allows me to write a in terms of b. So let's go ahead and do that. a is going to equal 4 minus the square root of b squared minus 6b plus 16. Okay, so I was basically able to get the a by itself or I mean in terms of b. So what I can do now is I can just take one of the equations and just go ahead and substitute that. And for that purpose, I can actually use the second equation, which is this one, right? I can just go ahead and use this equation uh, and replace a with, uh, actually not, the, not that equation, <laughs> it's the other way around. Uh, since we got the a by itself, a in terms of b, um, well, I could just go ahead and do the following then. Let me go ahead and find this. Uh, at this point, I'm, I'm probably gonna just uh, use the fact that x is equal to a plus b. So let me go ahead and substitute that. So I have from the second equation, I have 3 minus b squared plus 6 minus x. So I'm going to replace x with a plus b here. So that's going to be 6 minus a minus b squared. So I'm using this equation here. Okay. But replacing x with a plus b because we know that x is equal to a plus b. And then that's going to equal 9. And in this equation, uh, I'm going to replace a with this expression here, 4 minus that stuff. Okay? So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so it's going to look like this. We're going to have uh, 3 minus b squared plus, and I could actually, I do have an uh, option here first to replace this and then take the square. It's probably going to be better that way. So... I'm going to go ahead and replace a with this 4 minus the square root of b squared minus 6b plus 16. Okay, that replaces a minus b and then that is squared and that's equal to 9. Okay, so now we can go ahead and uh, simplify this a little bit more. 3 minus b quantity squared plus 6 minus 4 is going to give me 2. So that's going to be 2 plus the square root of b squared minus 6b plus 16 minus b and that all of that is squared and that's equal to 9. Okay, so now we can go ahead and expand this and we're going to get an equation in b. Let's go ahead and do that. This is going to be 9 minus 6b plus b squared plus, now if you square the expression, you can treat it as x minus y, uh, x plus y plus z and square the whole thing. That's going to be x squared plus y squared plus z squared and then two-way products, and there's a two in front of them. So I can just go ahead and multiply them and multiply by two. So it's going to look like four times this. Okay, and then minus 4b. And then, so first and second, first and third, and I'm going to do second and third. So it's going to be minus 2b multiplied by the square root of b squared minus 6b plus 16. Okay, and the whole thing is equal six nine. So 9 cancels out, and then we obviously have other numbers. So let's go ahead and uh, put this together in a nicer way. Uh, we're going to get b squared from here, b squared, and b squared. That's going to give us 3b squared, okay? Then I got minus 6b, uh, minus 4b. That's going to make minus 10b, okay? And then I have a constant uh, that I can take care of. I have a 4 plus 16. Oh, we have a minus 6b here too, which we ignore. So that's going to be minus 16b. So let's change this into a 16b. We have no other b's, right? Okay. And then we have the uh, constant here. So that's going to be a 4 plus 16. That's going to be a 20. Okay. And then uh, we're going to have our radicals. Uh, our radicals have a common term. So we can just go ahead and write it as 4 minus 2b outside the parentheses, and then we have the radical b squared minus 6b plus 16. And the whole thing is equal to 0. Okay? Now, we do have a radical on here, so let's go ahead and isolate that. Uh, we can do this with, leave this here, uh, or doesn't really matter, the other way around. Uh, if I can just go ahead and um, put these on the other side, so just subtract and add them. 
So we're going to get uh, 4 minus 2b times the square root of b squared minus 6b plus 16 is equal to the opposite of this because we're just subtracting the whole thing. And that's going to be 16b minus 3b squared minus 20. And then what we're going to do at this point is we're going to square both sides. If you square both sides, you're going to get first one is going to be 16 minus 16b plus 4b squared. And the second piece is going to be just the expression under the radical. And it's going to equal the square of this expression. And if you go ahead and square that, you're going to be getting 256b squared plus 9b to the fourth plus 400. And then the two-way products is going to give you, that's going to give you minus 96b cubed minus 720b and finally plus 120b squared okay now you're going to go ahead and distribute this and then you're going to distribute that and i'm just gonna uh, for the sake of time i'm just going to go ahead and save you the trouble and give you the resulting equation here so from this you're going to be getting something like 5b to the fourth minus 56b cubed plus 200b squared minus 288b plus 144 and the whole thing is equal to zero now you might be wondering what are we going to do at this point right so i'm going to go back to this equation here where the b is okay and just kind of go back here so if we are looking for an integer solution if you can't if we're not looking for an integer solution we, we have to solve this quartic which is going to be oh my god crazy right so we're going to be looking for integer solutions and again for the sake of time i'm just going to give you that if you look at the factors of 144 divided by the factors of 5 by factor theorem or the rational root theorem you're going to get all possibilities and if you just go ahead and plug it in uh, you're going to find that some of them work and among the values that work actually you'll notice that b equals 2 works here and b equals 2 is actually going to work twice Okay, so in the factored form, this expression is going to look like b minus 2 squared times 5b minus 6 times b minus 6 is equal to 0. From here, you can find all the rational solutions, basically. And they're all rational, by the way. And you, you're going to notice that uh, 2 is a double root. That doesn't matter much. But b equals 6 is another possibility, and b equals 6 fits. But if you check all these possibilities, you're going to notice that B is actually, um, it's going to be, from the picture, if you look at the original picture here, B is actually um, a, a little more than half of 3, which I would say uh, 1.5, larger than 1.5, obviously between 1.5 and 3. So the only reasonable solution here at this point would be B equals 2. Okay? So we're going to take that as our solution. And what happens if B equals 2? Let's go ahead and find that. We were trying to solve for X, right? And we now know that B is equal to 2. So we're going to be using our, we're going to use our equation. We can just go ahead and use the second one, 3 minus B squared, right? 3 minus B squared plus 6 minus X squared is equal to 9. And if you go ahead and replace B with 2 here, then we're going to be solving for x. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. If you replace b with 2, this is going to be 1. You're going to get 6 minus x squared is equal to 9. From here, 6 minus x squared is going to be 8, which means that we have two possible solutions. 6 minus x is either 2 root 2 or 6 minus x is negative 2 root 2. And from here, we get two possibilities. x is equal to 6 minus 2 root 2 or 6 plus 2 root 2. Obviously, if you check our original figure, x is less than 6, right? We know that x is less than 6 because 6 is the height of the rectangle. So given that x is less than 6, this can't be a possible solution. So we're going to reject that and we're going to go by this. Okay, so that's the side length for the square. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, comment and like and see you in the next video.